Okay, so now what? Okay, so you've gotten through, hopefully, um, all this process of installing and setting up and learning the Git workflow. So now let's actually play with this a little bit. Okay, let's extend our knowledge. But before I start, <laughs> I want to show you something I've been talking about in the videos, but I just didn't see it until now because if you remember right, my terminal kept using PowerShell, which again, nothing wrong with PowerShell. I just have a comfort level with Git Bash, so I like it. And if you don't know about these things, this is just a different way the terminal um, uh, is, is using different types of interfaces, different types of software. So I noticed uh, when I was playing in here before that what you can do is select the default profile. And so what I did here is I just said, oh, now it's bash. <laughs> so now I should be able to do that little trick that I did before where I say open in and it didn't that dog. Okay, see, I thought it was going to work that way. Oh, it's got bash as the default. So I must also have to tell it when I do that command. Um, so I love that command. So I will definitely figure out how to make that open and integrated terminal uh, work the way I want it to. So I thought that was it. But so this is, I'm not even sure. Let's see if I do a new terminal, it should be bash. And it is. Okay, so it did change that, which is awesome. Okay, so now here's what you want to do. Oh, by the way, one other thing I did figure out, I had talked about in this series, is that there is a something called idle that is used to write and run Python code. If you ever hear of that, I just want you to know when you install it, you get idle. But what we're doing is running code in a in a full, well, it's not a full IDE or integrated development environment, but it is definitely a very popular one. As a matter of fact, you will see more and more people using VS Code. And again, I, I think I previewed that Angela uses something else when she does this in, in day, thir day 13, uh, which is totally fine as well. I, I don't try, I try not to say this is what you need to use, but this is what I'm using because this is what I see many people use. All right, so you did it. Now, if you're reading this, you got your local dev environment, right? If not, you know, make sure you reach out for help. So here's a list of what you need to do. All right, so we're going to create a new folder in your public repo, right? Uh, and in that W1, you're going to do two things. Oh, yes, that's right, two things. Okay, so let's first create that. Then let me just show you, because I we've done folder creation where I did it from, uh, in this case, the file explorer. But let's actually do it in here, because I think this is definitely a better interface. Uh, so while I'm... While I have my public, because this is where we're going to be working for this, I would select new folder. Okay. And by the way, if you hit something different, just hit escape to get out of it because you just don't, you want, because it's very, like, it's very easy to click off somewhere else here. So let's create a new folder here called W1, which week one. Okay. So that creates a new folder. And then in there, um in the private okay so now that we've created that now we're actually going to do a little work in preparation for how to do our post and this is where i ended last video and you just want to do this okay so now that we've created the folder we're actually going to move into the public i'm sorry the private folder into that 100 days right into these files and run these like you know run this code um I'm guessing most of you had this it didn't write the code in a VS code. Oh, wow. Oh, I accidentally posted my link. Oh, that's funny. Anyway, I was copying something that it just posted. So here's what you want to do is you want to open each of these files. Um, there's different ways you could do this, right? I showed you before. You could just run these. Uh, da, 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 new line created. Good. That ran, right? Did you get any errors? If it asks for something, you can come down here, right? Oh, three. Good. Not sure why. Oh, yeah. I had added in there twice. That's why. All right. So make sure everything runs. That, that's that's the point of this exercise. Go through and, and look and play with the different ways of running things. Like I showed you before, I like um, to... Oh, wow. That's an interesting new little keyboard shortcut there. I'm not sure how that happened. I'm going to do 100 days. Oh, I see. When I hit tab, it's actually changing. Oh, and look at this. I'm in the, that's what, that's why. <laughs> because what happens here 
is this is in the Python terminal, not in the bash terminal. So it looked a little different, which again, not a problem because let's see if this will work. I'm going to go into day one. Good. And then I'm going to do Python ex1.py. Cool. So it runs without error. All right. So that's the first thing you want to do. So just run through all your code. See if you had any errors. Um, right. And then review your code and think of something that you'd like to add to one of the exercises or the final project. So we had several of those, right? And so what you're going to do is you're going to write some code. So now, right, so now that we've kind of looked through that, it's a good idea to, to actually, it's always a good idea once you write code is to go back and see if you still understand what it's doing. Like, uh, and I'm going to get rid of some of my other terminals. I just like it clean like that. So, um, what you want to do is look at this code. See if you remember like, oh yeah, in this final one. Oh yeah, we did the tip thing. Hmm. What could I add to this? What skill have I learned, right? To do this. So what you, what you can do is um, take that code, right? For wherever you're going to change it. And you can just copy it if you want, but I'm going to show you here is I'm going to now going to create a, um, and I'm moving back and forth between the public and the private. So I'm just telling you that. And this is why sometimes it's just good to start with them rolled up, meaning it doesn't show the folders. And then here in the W1, right? Because if I was to create a file here, uh, it would create it in that folder, uh, this base folder, or what we might call the root folder. But in the W1, here I want to call main.py. Okay. And this is where you want to take, right, and uh, copy. The, you can copy the b base code from either an exercise or a project, right, and name it what I already did, and then copy that paste in and modify it. Add something to it. You know, again, this is where you kind of get to play around and figure out how, how could I add some piece of functionality here. Okay, so once you've done that, you're ready to do your post. Uh, so here's what you do want to do. You want to hit your reply. You know, tell us a little something about you, why you're here, what you hope to get out of it. Um, now, you're going to also create a README file in your week one. And you and in it, describe a program you'd like to create in this class. Now, you're not 100% committing to this, but something you think maybe you, you know, maybe you've seen something, you've thought of something, you've experienced something that you thought, man, that would make a great app, or you've seen somebody else do something that you think you can make better, or something you're just interested in doing, right? So here's what you would do there. Uh, here in this same week one, we create another file, readme.md. Okay, this is the uh, what we've been working on with documenting our work. I'm just doing shift. My little keyboard's funky here, right? So this is the uh, what is something I want to. You can put whatever heading you want here. Create. The one thing I do want to show you, and the only reason I put that wood in was in VS Code. One thing you can do is actually here is render it as a README file, what typically people see. So you can see that by doing one of those, it creates like two creates a smaller heading, and it's the idea of heading. And if you want to go back and review the cheat sheet, go do that. But at least write something, like something you might want to create. Um, for this, you know, again, you're going to be having three places along this semester where you have to create something and come in for a code review. This is not committing to that, but at least you've given it some thought. Okay. And then here, answer this. Were you able to get your local dev environment, right? How did it go? So talk about that process. Uh, any uh, bumps you may have run into. Uh, so these are just things you want to include in your reply to get all the points. And did all your code from day one and day two run in the private repo? If not, uh, what did you, I put you twice, find in doing this work, right? So what, anything that came out of you running that code. And then which exercise um, or final project did you add function, functionality into and provide us a link to your main.py file? and then reply to two of your stu fellow students posts. So remember, the idea here is, is that you write code on your own, right? Um, 
I, there is a definite correlation between reading code and the ability to write code. But this exercise first says write some code on your own. Does I don't even give you a level of functionality I want you to do, but I just want you to look at that code and think of something that you could add to it. Okay, so, um, so in this case, I've already created my files. I haven't written anything in there. Let me just do a just quint you know, example of output. So at least I have something in there. And in the README file, I did put something in here. Here's the only reason I'm doing this is so that now I can move into my uh, public. By the way, notice the reason when I hit tab there, it stopped at P is because I have, that's where the similarities between the two folders are. Cool. And so what I can do here is get add star. Oh, I should have done get status. My bad. I've already done it. it. So if you're modifying, it'll be read that it modified it. If it's new, you're, it's an untracked file that you've added in, then, it, then it's green, right? And I can do git uh, commit dash m. I can say week one. And you can lt um, work. OK. All right, so now that I've done that, I have at modified the code from a Git workflow, right? So we're reviewing that Git workflow. I've done, uh, if I do a Git status, here I will see that my local repo is one commit ahead, okay? So we don't have, and really what this is saying is it's time to do Git push, okay? Because the reason is, is that you've committed the uh, code into your local repo, but you have not committed it. Let me see if I have, there we go. Okay, so I can go back to here because I'm just showing you how to get that link. And I'm gonna go to here and week one. Uh, cool, all right. So actually I think what I'll have you do, and I'll change this a little bit, is just give us control C, a link to your main one, your, um, and actually this main, is your branch and your tree. So this you didn't create, it's just created automatically by the structure. But once you're in this week one directory, then that is the URL that somebody else clicks on. Again, in public, everyone can see everyone else's work, not true in private. So in your reply, you answer, right, write, uh, write and answer all these things. And then you can provide your link. Um, and one thing you can do here is, and it might do it. Uh, Cam Let's see if Canvas does it sometimes. Yep, and actually I can tell it did it because it actually changed the color here. And what? And if you go into, because this actually shows you down here the HTML, so you can see this was actually uh, linked here. If for some reason your browser doesn't, then you just, when you type, copy that, then you can come over here. Uh, and for me, I can edit the link or you can just add uh, the link uh, as well right there. Okay, so you'll have this link in addition to answering all the questions above. Okay. Hope this helps you walk through this assignment. I look forward to seeing your output. See you later.